she, she will introduce us uh, with the events which could be not only profitable, but also uh, sustainable. So, Fiona, stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. That's nice to start with a round of applause. That's lovely. Um, so, I managed to meet a few of you in the audience. I didn't get to meet this side, I'm afraid. Um, so, first of all, just so I know and I can tailor this presentation to you, um, how many of you are currently implementing and taking action around things that will make a, a big difference to the environment, to the local community. Put your hand up if you're, if you're definitely doing that. And how many of you want to know how to do that to make a business difference? Okay, great. So most of the audience want to know how to do it to make a business difference. So that's what we'll focus on today. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted to start with um, a bit of a a background and an introduction into myself. So my name's Fiona. 10 years ago, I started, um, I ran an event company and the focus was to make events that were good for the environment, that were good for the local community and that made business sense. And 10 years ago, the first event that we did, we had a client that said, it's really important that people that come to our events see that we're considering the environmental impact. It's vital. So we visited a few hotels and asked them what they could do to support that. And the hotel that we chose said, we can recycle, we will have separate bins for you. We can use local food and we can use tap water. That's no problem at all. Really basic, basic things. Then when we got to the event, on the morning of the event, none of that was in place. Now, you're all from the event industry and you know what it's like. The event starts at nine o'clock. You can't say to everybody, wait outside for another two hours. We're not quite ready. The doors have to open. So my experience that morning was of having to move a lot of bottles of water, plastic bottles of water away and get jugs in. My experience was asking my team members to stand by bins that we had brought ourselves and we put labels on so that people knew where they could put paper, where they could put their food waste. And after that, I realized, okay, there's something missing. Because when I went to the hotel, they said they could do this, but they didn't. So what's missing? And I saw that there was an education piece missing. So the hotel knew to say yes to what the customer was asking on the show around to win the business, but they didn't know how to do it practically. So that's how Positive Impact was born. So Positive Impact, we're a not-for-profit and it's all about creating education and collaboration opportunities to create a sustainable event industry. Now, what we're talking about today is really the future of events. So I just shared with you the experience of 10 years ago, and I now want to take you 20 years into the future. So 20 years into the future, it's going to be so easy for all of us to buy whatever we want online through all sorts of technology that doesn't currently exist. And it's actually going to be very hard for us to build relationships with people because there's going to be so much noise and so much opportunity going on. So people are going to be looking for companies that really connect to them. How, put your hand up if you know Tom Shoes. Have you heard of Tom Shoes? Okay, great. This is a shoe company that makes shoes that are functional and they look okay but they have a brilliant story behind them because every time you buy a pair of their shoes, another pair of shoes is donated to someone in the world that needs shoes. So the product looks okay, costs the average amount, but it has this story that somebody else in the world benefits when you buy those shoes. That business has grown phenomenally massive and that's the trend that we're going to see in the future. 
So it's all about businesses that are making a difference. When I say making a difference, sometimes people hear, this costs more money or this doesn't generate money. So I just want to get very clear at the start, this is all about good business sense. If you want your business to be profitable, to be successful, to be globally known, then now is the time to be considering what the social impact and the environmental impact of your business is as well. So these are a couple of the companies that we've been working with over the last 10 years. Um, and I'll share a few stories from these different companies. Um, one of the things that's really key to, um, to understand is that sustainability is not something that you can just put into place and then tick, you've done it. It's forever a journey of improvement. And one of the really big opportunities that currently exists for every single one of you in this room is to take away something from today's presentation, start doing it differently, and then start sharing with the industry. So one of the things that we've done with all of these people is made sure that we're sharing their story so that other people can learn. It's not about this is right and you must do this. It's all about understanding what your situation is and creating something that works for you. So let me take some examples. Um, so GES are a very big um, operations logistical company and they set up stands around the world. They, in their first year, they were looking at what they should address for their business. They have a lot of travel that they do, a lot of people in the vans driving around with the materials. So the first thing they did was address that, how much mileage was being travelled and also what type of fuel was being used in the vehicle. Now that might not be relevant for any of you in this room, but it was relevant for their business. So rather than there being 10 things that everybody has to do, it's all about looking at what's key for you and your business. Zurich Bank, obviously a, a very big global bank that have a lot of big events. They had no idea of what the impact of one of their events was. So the first thing that they did was to measure the impact of their events. So they had somebody on site measuring the waste, measuring the materials they'd used, and really cutting down on materials that they were using. Then the Glasgow Commonwealth Games and uh, the London 2012 Olympic and Paralympic Games, we worked really hard to tell the story of what came out of these big events. Now again, you might not be organising big events like this, but you can definitely learn from what has happened at these events. So um, there are all sorts of materials on the websites that you can read um, in relation to this. So the objectives for today's session is to get really clear on what sustainability means. To give you ideas on breaking through barriers in relation to sustainability, to have a look at what businesses and what destinations around the world are doing about this, and also to give you some ideas so that you can create an action plan. So one of the things that would be great is just in your notebook, if you write down action plan, and then every time I, I mention something in relation to it, the action plan, you can write that down. And the first thing I would say for your action plan is on the top of your action plan put, my action plan will look different from everybody else's, because it will. And that's the first important thing for us to get clear about. Everybody's action plan will be a different action plan. Okay? So what is sustainability? How, put, can you put your hands up if you're familiar with that word and you use that word sustainability? Great, so a few people, brilliant. So you'll know that sustainability is a balance of three things. It's a balance of your economic, your environmental and your social impact. So let's just explore this a little bit further. If you had an entire staff who were 
a little bit miserable because they didn't feel they were trained enough. They were maybe working long hours and, and weren't too happy and they weren't very inspired about the business. How much work would they be delivering and how good would their work be? It would probably be a limited amount and it would probably be of a limited level. But how about if that same staff, group of staff, were inspired by what they were doing, were educated, and really passionate, so they were putting in maybe extra time or they were being more effective or efficient with their work, they would be delivering more for you. And what this would mean would be a better business result. So you might be having more leads come in, you might be winning more business. So you can see there how the social impact of the staff can affect the economic impact of your business. A lot of people get confused and think sustainability is just the environmental impact, and it's not. This is all about really good business sense. So your balance between how are you earning your money, how are you spending your money, what do the communities around you think, what do your internal staff think, what do your local communities think, and also what resources are you using? So are you spending money on items to give away? Are you spending money to donate things? It's also a key developing issue for sponsors and partners. So again, if you want to earn more money for your event, this, this is an area to address. Um, so sustainability is the future of businesses. It's absolutely good business sense. That, that's one key takeaway. So you're all in this room today to learn about your future for your business. And I'm, I'm just going to hand over to show you a short film that we've created um, this year because Positive Impact is 10 years old this year. So to celebrate that, you want to make a we've created this. <laughs> we thought so. We want you to make a difference too. In fact, we want you to have a positive impact. The events industry is one of the most important industries in the world right now. Why? Because all those people working to solve global challenges like climate change, hunger, inequality and civil unrest use events. They use events to shine a spotlight on global challenges and inspire change. We want to support them. Positive Impact is a not-for-profit and we exist to provide education and collaboration opportunities. Our vision is to create an event industry that has a positive social, economic and environmental impact. We are so passionate about this that we've created a pile of resources to support and inspire you. Because we are a not-for-profit, all money spent with us goes directly to developing new resources and initiatives. So your business makes a difference. Together we can collaborate to create a sustainable event industry by 2020. So where do we start? Firstly, have a think about what your positive impact could be. Use our online guides, mentoring and case studies to gather advice and ideas for your sustainability journey. Secondly, educate yourself with our online materials and become a Positive Impact Ambassador. Our courses have been created for people who want to show leadership in their career. Finally, if you want to experience cost savings, enhance your reputation as a responsible business and demonstrate global leadership, take our workshops to implement ISO 2012-1, the International Standard for Event Sustainability. So if you want to shout about your leadership, share your innovative techniques and encourage others, then log in to share a positive impact. Tell us what you've seen, load up a picture, pinpoint it on the map and submit. This social media site is designed to promote leadership, share best practice and provide inspiration. Through collaboration with you, the vision for a responsible event industry which makes a difference can become a reality. Start your journey now.
So that should just give you a background around the work that we've been doing. And this year, Positive Impact is 10 years old, so we're really celebrating um, what the last 10 years have looked like. Um, and that means every month we're doing a different themed area. So this month we're focusing on waste, and next month we're focusing on sport. Um, and there was one key thing within that film that I just wanted to signpost to. So we're all in the event industry, and when events happen, people come together and they create something different. So MPI has a great campaign called When We Meet, We Change the World. And that's the business that we're in. So what's absolutely vital is that when we gather people to meet, we're also considering the environmental and social impacts of that. So for the next um, 29 minutes, yeah, it goes backwards, does it? Yeah. <laughs> so for the next half an hour, we're going to be going through some, some details. But I would really love to get questions from you as well, because it, it makes a difference for me to know what you want to know. So right now, does anyone have any questions, or is there anything that people would like to hear about during this presentation so I can make sure that I give that to you. And I know, I know it's going to take something to be brave enough to put your hand up. <laughs> so what questions does anyone have or what does anyone want to learn from this? Yes. Hi, Fiona. Thank you very much. Uh, my, my question is regarding how you can uh, uh, convince people that they have to invest there. And what are the key points to convince the customer, client, meeting owner? And, uh, you know, it's not that easy, even if yourself uh, knows it's the yeah. right direction. Yeah. That you need the uh, tips. Great. Brilliant question. So I'm going to give you three tips now that you can write on your action plan for when you talk to anyone. Because really, from when you walk out of this door today, you can start saying, sustainability is essential for me, and here are, here are the three here are the things I'm going to do about it. And let me tell you the three tips to talk to people about. One, this is risk management. So anyone that you're working with will want their brand to look good. That's true, right? No one wants their brand to look bad. Making sure that your brand's event also looks after the environment and looks after local communities and the staff and all the supply chain is all about risk management. So let's take an example. Let's say um, there is a brand like uh, Unilever, which is very focused around sustainability. Does everyone know Unilever? Yeah, great. So you'll know that their products are about making a difference in the world. You'll know that they've stopped using palm oil because of forestation. So imagine that you were doing a massive Unilever annual general meeting. And imagine that you served food in lots of packaging. Or imagine that you served food that was made with the palm oil. What would be everyone's impression of that event? They would hear Unilever saying they were doing good stuff, but they wouldn't believe it, would they? Because we know that the event is what brings the brand to life. So the first point when you're selling it is it's all about risk management. The second point when you're selling it is that this is about leadership. So again, every business wants an opportunity or a way to be different from the other businesses around them. Now, sustainability, I, I said before, it's a journey. It's not, this is right and that's wrong. It's not, here's the things you have to do and everybody does them. So if you take on, or if your client takes on being a leader in this area, there is a phenomenal opportunity for them to share their story. So I just shared with you the story of a number of clients we've worked with. The opportunity of leadership has given them the chance to tell their story more, so get more press time and more exposure. Then the third part, so there's brand risk, there's leadership, there's financial responsibility. So knowing what you're spending your money on and why you're spending it there. So let me tell you a little bit more about this piece. Um, with sustainability, one of the things that's very important is to think about reporting. So don't just say, oh yeah, we're gonna do a sustainable event. Start to measure and report. Now the minute that you start to measure and report, you start learning where you're spending your money and what your money's being spent on. 
And as soon as you start doing that, you're very clear on your budget and you can look at reducing and removing costs. So a very basic and a very easy example is giveaways at events. So you may be spending a large amount of money on products that you're giving away. And when you're looking at the, at the impact of that, what is the impact of those products? So any giveaway pens or any giveaway gadgets, is that having a positive impact on the environment? Is it making a big social difference? Well, maybe, I suppose, if you're giving your pens to people that need the pens, but if you're giving your pens to people in the event industry, does that make a difference? And all of a sudden, it comes back to that brand reputation and that leadership. So does your plastic pen really represent your brand? So those are the three points that I tend to use when I'm talking to people about why sustainability is key. So that's how to sell it. I think there was another question at the back. Yes. Yeah, great. So I'm going to go, I'm going to answer this question now in a bit more detail, but that was a great question because locally you can look at what your challenges are. So if you're working locally, if you're working um, in a very small radius, maybe three miles, then yes, you could work out what local food was, you could work out what your waste infrastructure was, you could work out who your communities are. But the reality of our industry is we are a global industry. So that then throws up the challenge. So how on earth can we know what to do? Because we are a global industry. So the next action for your um, action plan is to look at international standards. So on your action plan, look at international standards. And I'll talk a little bit about that now. Any other challenges that people want to, to raise right now that you want addressing? No? OK, so we'll go with the challenges I've identified. So some of these have come up already. The biggest challenges that we're facing, getting buy-in from key influencers. The concern over doing it right. Having a coordinated approach, that's just what came out there. How do you know what to do if you're working internationally versus locally? Not being sure how to measure and then time and cost barriers. So I'm going to address some of these as we go forward now. Any challenges missing from that list that you're facing? Okay, great. So... I'm going to talk a little bit about buy-in from key influencers. So I, always, I already shared the three tips that I would give you when, when you're selling sustainability. Um, but I, I want to share a little bit about our, our story in the last 10 years of positive impact and what we've experienced. Um, it's very much about education and awareness. So we have collaborated with a number of partners to create online education products to encourage people to just get familiar, just an hour doing an online education piece so people can stop thinking that this is something that's just an environmental nice to do and really understand that this is the future of business. We've also run workshops all around the world, um, just like today, where we talk about this is the business future for the event industry. So in our experience, we found that getting people into the room and talking to them about the opportunities, about those three things, leadership, brand risk, and um, knowing where your money is spent. That's one of the key things that makes a difference and overcomes challenges. Um, and you'll have heard mention our ambassador scheme. That's open to anybody. So if you're passionate about getting into a room of people and sharing this with them, then come and see me at the end because you can be part of our ambassador scheme. Lots of people are concerned about doing the right thing. So how many of you want to implement sustainability, but you're concerned you're going to do it wrong? Just put your hand up if that's a concern for you. No one's worried about doing it wrong? Wow, you're an amazing audience. <laughs> Just get out there and start doing it then and sharing what you're doing. Because the concern about doing it wrong often comes up from, from big businesses that 
have a brand strategy and have a communications department and they want to start in sustainability but they're worried about, about getting it right. So um, I want to share with you a case study of the Aberdeen Exhibition and Conference Centre. So this is a venue that is in Scotland and they came a couple of years ago, they said we want to implement sustainability but we, want, we have a concern about doing it right. So we worked with them to say, right, what are you doing now? What are your gaps? Where do you want to be in the future? And we implemented the international standard ISO 2012-1 with them. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as we go forward. And that's going to answer the question in terms of how we all do something as one industry together. Um, Aberdeen Exhibition and Conference Centre also decided they wanted to measure and they didn't necessarily know what they should be measuring, so we worked with them around using the Global Reporting Initiative, Event Organiser Sector Supplement. So these are the two key things you need to know about on your action plan, ISO 2012-1 and the Global Reporting Initiative, Event Organiser Sector Supplement. These are the two internationally recognised frameworks. Those titles can sound a bit boring, they can sound a bit academic, but if there's only two things that you know globally, it's those two things, ISO 2012-1 and the Global Reporting Event Organiser Sector Supplement. So now, Aberdeen Exhibition Conference Centre very recently had a supplier workshop where they got their suppliers in and told them what they were doing about sustainability. Um, they're starting to measure in detail around their events and in the future they're going to be producing reports. So when you go to that venue, when you put an event in that venue, they'll be able to give you a report and show you what the impact was, which is a great step forward. Now what they're doing is totally different to what other exhibitions or other destinations will be doing. And that's okay. This is just an example of sharing. <clears throat> Another one of the challenges that we're addressing is the concern of people doing the right thing and also the concern of people knowing what others are doing. And we launched a campaign a year ago called Share a Positive Impact. It's a little bit like a Facebook for sharing what you're doing around sustainability. And the goal is that people will just post on that so that anyone around the world for free can access what's going on and can get some ideas. One of the things that really excites me about sustainability is the creative aspect. We're all a very creative and innovative industry. So rather than seeing this as a challenge, this is a massive opportunity for us. And the more that we can share, the more that we'll inspire each other's ideas. So the uh, next thing I would suggest for your action plan is to make sure you share what you're doing and use the share a positive impact area. Now the question came up at the back about having a um, local approach versus having an international approach. So what I'm going to tell you a bit about now is ISO 2012-1. And how many of the audience have heard about ISO 2012-1? Just put your hands up. Okay, not many. Great. So, <laughs> ISO 2012-1 is an international standard. How many people have heard of ISO 9001 or ISO 14001? Okay, great. So you're familiar with the concept of ISOs. They're international standards for everything from creating a product to your way of working. So ISO 2012-1 is all about your way of working in the event industry around sustainability. It was inspired by the London Olympic and Paralympic Games because they said they wanted to implement sustainability, but they knew it would be very hard to prove because there's no one right way with sustainability. So it's hard for them to say, look, we tried our hardest. And they realized that what was missing was a culture, a framework for how you should work to implement this approach. So ISO 2012-1 was created. It's really rare for there to be an ISO standard just for one industry. So this is really important. The event industry has its own ISO standard. That's massive. The car industry doesn't, the pharmaceutical industry doesn't. The aeroplane industry doesn't. They all have to use the same ones. We have one unique for us. 
Now, the reason for that is because we know our work isn't the same 365 days a year. We know that we work on events which happen at a certain time. We have the build-up, we have the event, and we have the breakdown. So this standard really considers that, and it considers the importance of the supply chain as well. Now, the question of how to make sure that we implement sustainability on a global level is now a little bit easier to understand because we have this international standard. So any country you go to, any venue you use, any catering company you use, um, any hotel can all be implementing this standard. There are no barriers to it being implemented. So if you want to implement an event that has a good economic, environmental and social impact, one of the questions you should be asking on your action plan is asking your entire supply chain, are they implementing ISO 2012-1? And if we look forward to the future, all of the big companies, all of the big corporates will learn that we have this standard in our industry and they'll start asking us. It's not there right now. You won't hear people asking a lot for it, but that's because it's only been around three years. So you're all in this room and you now know that this is the future and this is coming. So what, what questions do you have about this ISO 2012-1 standard? Yes. Uh, we know each other, Fiona. Pierre Fernandez, MPI uh, in Europe, Meetings Professional International. One very simple question. We are, we are thinking about, we do our um, European conference, you know, yeah. the European yeah. Meeting and Event Conference every year. Next one, uh, we just did it this, this month in Krakow. Next year, we do it in Copenhagen. Yeah. Very simple question. How long in advance do we have to plan yeah. uh, to make it become an ISO 2012-1 uh, uh, conference? Brilliant question. It's really up to you, that's the great thing. I would say you definitely need about four months and the easiest way to do it is over a year's cycle. So let me take you very quickly through what implementing ISO 2012-1 entails. Now this is literally a two minute summary, okay? <laughs> the first thing that you need to do is decide the scope of what you're implementing it on. So as Pierre said there, it would be the European conference next year in Copenhagen. The next thing you do is you decide what are your specific issues for that event. So a European conference in Copenhagen is very different from a sport event in South Africa, or very different from a global medical meeting in Canada. So what are the issues that you're gonna be facing in Copenhagen? So identify those issues, and then look at what you can control or influence, and set objectives around those things that you can control and influence. And when you set objectives, also set targets and create a plan of how you will measure if you're successful on those objectives. And then as you go along, just keep looking back at that plan. What's working? What's not working? If things aren't working, change it. The things that are working, continue with those. Look at the measurements you're getting. And then at the end, after the event, you do an event debrief and you look at, right, here were our objectives. Did we achieve them? Why didn't we achieve them? And what did, our, what did our stakeholders say about this? What did the supply chain say? What did our, our attend att event attendees say? So that's how you implement ISO 2012-1 in two minutes. It's very straightforward and it's also a framework that makes business sense. What's key is that someone takes ownership of it. So for example, the MPI European Conference, it's MPI's conference, so it would be great for MPI to have ownership of that. The venue that it's taking place in, the venue will be a hotel, so it would be great if the hotel did their own ISO 2012-1 and took ownership for their own ISO 2012-1. And what you'll see very soon is across the whole supply chain, each different part of the supply chain will be implementing ISO 2012-1 and coming together and saying, yes, we're working in that way too. And it will make a massive difference for how we work as an event industry as well. Any other questions on ISO 2012-1? Great. So um, I would advise you to go to the Positive Impact website for the best practice um, that exists, international best practice. And if you have any case studies at all, then come to us because we would love to feature them. 
I want to talk a little bit now about monitoring and measuring. So imagine in 20 years, the whole of the event industry, we're all working to ISO 2012-1. So we're all working in that way that makes business sense. The next thing that we'll all be doing is reporting, telling our story about what we've done and what we've achieved and what we've measured. And we're very fortunate in the event industry because there is also a framework for that. How many people have heard of the Global Reporting Initiative? Put your hand up if you have. No? A couple? Great. How many people here work with corporate clients? Great, so most of you. Now, your clients are all reporting annually to this framework. So again, if you want to show leadership with them, if you want to create a better relationship, if you want to look after their brand, this is something that you can be offering them. So this reporting framework um, covers a number of, of things to measure. Um, and next month, we're going to be launching an online system that makes this measurement very easy because it, measurement can be overcomplicated, and it's not about that. It's about asking the right questions and creating the right report. The time and the cost barriers, I actually think, are just excuses. So people will say to you, I don't have time to do this, or I don't have the budget to do this, and it's just an excuse. This is a new budget item, yes. This is a new thing to give time to, yes. But if we ignore it, then we're going to get left behind because the people that we want to work with, our corporate clients, are all taking this very seriously. So look at this like a marketing expense for winning new business. So I want to talk a little bit now, I'm just checking how long I've got, um, about what's happening from a destination perspective. How many people are here from destinations? Um, okay, a couple. This is now becoming essential in terms of how you communicate about your destination. And it goes back to that brand risk piece. So if someone's taking an event somewhere, they want to build their brand. So they want to make sure that the destination aligns with what they represent and that the venues they use do, and that the suppliers that they use also do. So there's a number of movements around the world. Um, we're working with the Thai Convention Bureau to communicate their sustainability uh, initiatives. We're also working uh, with a company called Ceresco in Japan. And they're very focused on providing um, more um, education and awareness around sustainability because obviously Japan has the 2020 Olympics. And what we're seeing is that big events like Olympics or like big conferences are now starting to say sustainability is key for us, so the destination needs to show it. Now, a question I'm regularly asked is if your destination is one which doesn't have public transport, which isn't that well developed, are you going to suffer? And the answer that I would always give is no, if you start your sustainability journey now. So if you start this conversation with your clients now, you won't suffer. If you ignore it, you absolutely will. So these are a couple of resources, again, on your action plan. If you're going to just look up a few resources, these are some that I really recommend you look at. Um, the CSR Share Day was a beautiful initiative that took place a month ago and it was 24 hours of sustainability experts in the event industry sharing their thoughts, their ideas, what they've seen as best practice. So if you go onto the Positive Impact website, we've collated all of those materials. Shouldn't take you 24 hours to read, you can just flick through them. Um, and you can learn about best practice from around the world. We've also got some really nice videos from the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. And they're just an example of what any event could do. So you'll, you'll watch them and you'll get some ideas, but it doesn't mean it's what you necessarily should do. And then we have a, a breakfast, what we're calling a breakfast report. And this was from an event that took place at the Houses of Parliament in the UK. And it was where a number of corporate companies sat around the table and said what they wanted to see from the future of the event industry. So if you want insight into what your clients want, that's a great report to look at as well. So to finish off, what would be great is to just get a little bit of feedback from you as the audience. You've heard that this is the future. This is the future of our business, the event industry. It's our financial future. 
It's our social future, it's how we're going to be working, and it's our environmental future, it's how we're going to live. What's something that you're going to be taking away from this session today? Who wants to share? And I know you've all been taking notes, so <laughs> who wants to share one thing that they're going to take away from this session? Yeah. Hello. Actually, I liked the idea about education, and I understand that actually it's a very much painful question up to today in our societies, um, on the business levels, on the educational institutions levels, mm. on our conscious as yes. members of society. And that is a very good point. Thank you for that. Great. So I hear you're taking away, raising awareness of education. Great. What else? <coughs> what else are you taking away? I'm starting right here because the, I'm from Sweden. The first thing I noticed, there are no garbage bins for plastic bottles, for paper. That's the first thing I noticed. So I'm starting from here. Great. Fantastic. Great. And I know it's daunting putting your hand up and taking the microphone and, and saying something. But I want you all to get that it has to start with you. So you leaving this room now and taking something on, that's how this changes. You didn't just sit here so you could have a 45 minute rest <laughs> and tune me out. You, you sat here to get something and you are all the people that are going to change the industry and also create better businesses for your businesses and for your future career from it. So the final piece I would say for your action plan is just to be brave and be in action because you can't make a mistake you can only make a, a positive difference and, and a positive impact. So thank you very much. I think we've, um, we've gone through a, a great action plan today. Um, I think you all know where to find us, positive impact, um, and you can get great education there. So have a look there. We also want to hear what you're doing. So when you leave here and you start doing something, share that story no matter how small it is. Um, and we'd love to have you be part of championing this change. So if you want to be involved in that, just come and see me. Oh, and we've got a little present for you as well. Um, so we have a, a new product that we're launching this month. Um, and we've created a little discount code for anybody in this room. So if you want to take that, you can go and have a look at the product. You can input the discount code. So that's just for you to encourage you on your, on your future journey. So yeah, that's our details. Thank you for your time. And I look forward to seeing what you will do in the future creating a sustainable event industry. Thanks. Thank you, Fiona.